My friends, really heavy, really sensitive topic today. We're going to talk about gender theory versus fact with my dear friend Jason Everett. Thanks for being here. You do not want to miss this one. Gender dysphoria, that's when people don't identify with their biological bodies, is very real and it's a massive cross for those who bear it. So people who struggle with gender dysphoria, who are often going through pain that would be very hard for us to relate with, we who don't struggle with that need to be treated with respect, need to be treated with compassion, uh, and need to feel welcomed and safe in society like anybody else. Uh, but in the past few years, we've watched what is, has been traditionally a cross that very few people bear transform into a cultural movement that's essentially popularized that cross and spread the, the pain of gender dysphoria to a lot of people who wouldn't otherwise struggle with it. Uh, in the past few years as we watch this movement, we're, we're watching Christian anthropology and the Christian worldview be relabeled hateful and bigoted. Uh, we're seeing counseling that people might do to help young people become comfortable in their own skin be relabeled uh, harmful. Uh, and we've seen an explosion of people who identify as trans. Uh, traditionally, it's been about 0.1% of the population. Today, there was a study done in a major U.S. city that showed about 9% of teenagers did not identify with the body of their birth. And 78% of teenage girls only identify as cisgender and straight. Wow. Uh, in the UK, they've seen a, a 4,400% increase in, in gender dysphoria among teenage girls in 10 years. In 2007, there was one uh, trans clinic in America. Now there's, there's 300 of them. And in many of them, a young person could go in without a doctor's note, without having seen a counselor, and leave with testosterone treatment. In Oregon, you can go into a transgender clinic at the age of 15 and get a mastectomy without a parent's note. And so much as questioning any of this can get you canceled, can lose your, your medical license. So the response has been fear, uh, even questioning this in, in, in sports, where we're seeing UFC champs who are, are, are male to female transgenders, uh, uh, weightlifting champs who are male to female transgenders, even questioning this stuff. We'll, we'll, lose, we'll lose your job, your career, your friends. What the heck is going on? Uh, here to help us make sense of it all, my dear friend, Jason Everett. Good to be with you again. You too, brother. Uh, Jason, you're, you're an expert in all things human sexuality related, um, for better or worse. I know you've told me sometimes you've gone to a restaurant after a day of chastity talks, and, and what might you hear from a teenager sitting across the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> There's the sex guy. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Check, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, what, what are we dealing with? How, how many genders are there right now? Well, Let, let's, let's get a bit more of the landscape of how bad things are getting in this Well, area. it depends who you ask. I know a girl applied at Stanford University. She showed me her college application on the phone. 18 to pick from, male and female, not options on the list. Uh, Facebook's up to 58. Facebook in the UK is 71. Tumblr has more than 500. So 500. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intersex, non-binary, trans, masculine, two-spirit, gender neutral, gender non-conforming, gender flora, gender. Astro Hold on, astro gender flora. Gen Stop right there. What is that? Uh, it, it's a, it's a gender that blooms and evolves. That's similar to a plant-like thing, but it's a non it, non-binary. I mean, th you start reading the definitions, and it's like, what the heck is going on? Like, is this, like, I had enough identity crisis growing up when there were two to pick from. Oh, yeah. And now these kids are being like, oh, you, you could be one of 500. It's like, what is going on? I mean, I think it's kind of what Vatican II said, that when God's forgotten, the creature itself becomes unintelligible. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I, and I don't mean to make light of it, but it is yeah. laughable when you think of gender yeah. flora. Oh, yeah, yeah. no. I mean, There's astral gender, astro gender. Yeah. That involves celestialism. And, like, it's like, what, our, our humanity is being hijacked right now. Yeah, I, and I, I would think... I would think people who traditionally just struggle with gender dysphoria yeah. and, and thought, I, I have, I'm a male, but I feel like I'm a female, would take offense at things like gender flora. Yeah, and perhaps right. so. I'm not so. hearing it. I'm not hearing that complaint happen, yeah. but, I, but I'm wondering when that's going to come. Yeah, no. Because there's a genuine struggle, mm -hmm. and then there's, there's obviously some stuff born of teenage angst. Because when I hear gender flora, what I hear is, look at me, 
and yeah. I can't stand my parents. Yeah, there's even I one mean, trend called trans trender. Trans trender. Meaning, meaning they're identifying as trans because it's trendy, and if they feel socially isolated and they come out in their public high school as trans something, they're immediately at least welcomed by somebody. And they're actually being groomed for this in the schools of just like, oh, well, you don't fit the perfect stereotypical norm of a 16-year-old girl. Well, maybe you're not a girl. And they're, they're being groomed in, in preschool on these things. Or, that, wow, you're 13 and a girl and you're not comfortable in your body? Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, like 90% of teenage girls are mm -hmm. 13? Maybe you're yeah. in the wrong body. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're taught this, mm -hmm. and then we wonder why this explosion's happening. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and then they're, they're brought into a special club of people who, who has mm -hmm. a unique status, protection, cause. Um, but there's, it, I think it's, it's so obvious that it's a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's literally no scientific evidence that people are born transflora. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gender fluid. Yeah. Like yeah. zero scientific evidence. And you can see throughout history that, that there's, there's cultural phenomena that shape even sexual desires. Like yeah. in Sparta, it was very common. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia was very common. Yeah. Is that because they were all born that way? Yeah. You know, I, no, it was, it was a cultural norm that shaped it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it seems obvious to people like us that there's cultural yeah. phenomena and norms shifting mm -hmm. and, uh, that, that are giving rise to this. But the accusation would be, no, it's always been there. Yeah. But people were too afraid to say it. Yeah. How would well, you respond to that? Well, I think true and false. I mean, we've always historically struggled with our sexuality in one way or another. Am I truly manly? Am mm. I, like, gender dysphoria is something that's been around for a very long time. But like you said, the cultural chaos right now has been lighter fluid on it. Whereas 50 years ago, if someone experienced this, be like, oh, I don't feel like I really fit in real well, you know, with masculinity and these social norms and stereotypes. Yeah. And uh, okay, I'm, I'm into theater and I'm into art and I'm into poetry and I'm not on the football team. And, and they work through it. Nowadays, it's like, oh, well, let's give you estrogen. You know, now this is probably what you are. Right. You're born in the wrong sex. You'll feel finally at home if we do a social transitioning. We can change your name. Define you social transition. Define these steps that people well, take. Well, there's typically four. First is a social transition. They'll change your, you can change your preferred pronoun. Um, not just he or she, but they or Z. There's a whole list of different. They, yeah. they singular. Yeah, right. plural, you yeah. name it. Um, uh, what restroom you're using, how you present in your attire, your name. That, that'd be the kind of the social element. Uh, following that would be puberty blockers, which you could give to like a nine-year-old kid. Nine so that their body does not old. go through puberty. Because, of course, at nine years old, you've got your identity all figured out. So let's give you some life-altering drugs. Um, then after that would be the cross-sex hormone therapy, where the girls are getting testosterone. The boys are getting estrogen, uh, you know, typically sterilizing these kids. And then, you know, at last, what ends up happening is the, the, the gender affirmation surgery used to be called the sex change operation. Um, they partly don't change it that, call it that, because you can't change your sex. I mean, they found more than 1,550 sex-specific genes, meaning your, your arteries are actually male or female. Mm. Your kidneys male or female. Your esophagus, your hair, your bone, everything's male or female. Every single cell is sexed. That's why you can't change your sex. You'd have to change every cell, let mm. alone even your soul. And so they changed the language. Now it's, no, it's just gender affirmation so that exteriorly my, I look like I feel interiorly. So basically your body, your feelings are not the problem. Your body's the problem. So mm. let's treat the body and we're collaborating with mental illness instead of actually treating it. That's why one anesthesiologist told me, he said he does not, he's already told the surgeons in his hospital, don't even approach me for anesthesia for a patient if you're giving him a gender operation. He said, I won't have anything to do with that. He said, I've seen the medical charts. I've seen the autism. I've seen the anxiety disorder, all the stuff going on in their lives. And to mm. physically mutilate that kid's body, mm. promising that that's going to be the answer. He said, I've seen the data. Their suicide rate is 19 times higher than the gender population after the surgery. It's so not the answer. The suicide rate increases after the surgery. Yeah, typically there's a brief time of euphoria where it's, ah, oh, I'm finally there. Okay. But then they realize this didn't solve the problems. And, 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 and then people say, well, it's just because they're not being accepted. Well, the, the study of the 19 times higher was done in Sweden, which is a very progressive culture in terms of these things. The reason the rate is higher and they have this high suicidality rate is because typically transgender inclinations are one kind of point on a constellation of many mental health difficulties that these individuals are experiencing in mm. their life. And to surgically mutilate the kid 
and tell them once you get that, everything is going to be good. Then they come out of, of the anesthesia, whether it's a, a week later or several mm. years later, so to speak. And it's like, wait a minute. I, I, I hurt my body, I didn't solve my problems. And so a friend of mine is personally friends in Canada with more than 100 detransitioners. These are individuals who've gone, they've gone through the whole process, social transitioning, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, surgery, and years later realized that was a really big mistake. And now they're flooding to social media, YouTube, they're writing books, they're doing social media. It's like a tsunami. When the tsunami hits, the first thing that comes is not a wave. The first thing that comes is the shoreline goes out. And people wow. are like, wow, if you don't know what a tsunami is, like, this is really wow. cool, there's a coral reef, we can walk out to this little shipwreck, <laughs> and you just start wandering <laughs> yeah, out into yeah. the sand. The people who know that that's how tsunamis work, they head inland, they get up in a high place because wow. the waves are coming. And I'm telling you right now, the whole culture is out to sea with the transgender thing. But the waves are coming mm. of these detransitioners, mm. and their voices will not be silenced in another 10 years or so. Please, God. They're going to beg people, don't do this. There's a better answer. Yeah, and I, I think this, this problem culturally might be solved in the courts. Because if this, if this happens to a kid when they're nine, mm -hmm. and what could have been passing becomes a permanent decision that they suffer from, oh, yeah. someone's going to get sued. Yeah. And that's going to wake people up. Mm -hmm. What percentage of kids who experience gender dysphoria does it naturally go away for if they're just left alone? It's approximately 90%. 90% will, come to, uh, will come to identify with their biological sex as long as transition therapy is not intervening. Meaning wow. they go to one of these gender clinics and they're like, oh, well, for sure, you know, you're transgender. You, but uh, for a lot of these kids, what's happening is th they don't feel like they conform to these overly rigid gender stereotypes. But what they've got to be affirmed in is like, look, I know I'm a man, not because I feel so manly. Mm. I know I'm a man because I have a body of a man. And the body is not meaningless, it's meaningful. Your body is good. What's not good is these overly rigid gender stereotypes that cause you to question the goodness of your body mm. and the goodness of who God created you to be. You don't have to fit that mold. Not everybody is, you know, He-Man and Barbie doll. Yeah. And, and if we don't fit into that, that's okay. And we yeah. need to affirm people in who God created them to be, even if they're not the captain of the football team. And for a lot of the individuals, that's what's needed. Not everybody, but for many, that's what needs to be addressed. Isn't it ironic that as we reject uh, gender stereotypes, uh, it's like gender stereotypes on crack. That yeah, girl right. likes to climb a tree. She needs a penis. Like, yeah. what, are, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, here's what, I, I, I can't wrap my head around this, okay? I, I like to think that human beings have goodwill in general. Yeah. And that, that people who I disagree with in the secular LGBT movement about, mm -hmm. about how, to, how to deal with this at least have the same motive, that we want to pastorally care for this person who presents yeah. with gender dysphoria. Yeah. But the things that you're sharing are not hidden. Yeah, no. That for 90% of the people, this would go away, but that if you make it a permanent decision, their chance of suicide is 19 times higher. Mm -hmm. what, what, what the heck is motivating them saying, whoa, whoa don't, even, don't even talk to a counselor. Get your testosterone pellets immediately. Yeah. What, why? Well, what they would uh, do say... Do they not care? Do they, are they owning the fact that, no, I don't care about how this kid turns out? Like, no, well, what's what, going on? What they're saying is, you know why the kid's killing himself? It's because of you right-wing hate mongers, these transphobic so people So they genuinely like you, believe that. that. Oh, yeah, that if you yeah. really accepted them and loved them like we do, then all these things would go away. Mm. We're giving them the answer, and you guys are just these hate speech mm. people that just need to be banned from culture because you're the ones killing them all. But I think, and in the end, our voices won't be the most powerful. The most powerful will be these detransitioners. You know, mm. and, and it's hard, especially for parents. I had there's a magazine called The Atlantic. It's a left-leaning magazine, but it said on the cover, "Your daughter's 13. She says she's trans. What do you do?" And I picked up the article, read this lengthy piece, and a lot of it was good. Where it started out, where this 13-year-old girl came to her parents, "Mom, Dad, I want top surgery," which is a radical double yeah. mastectomy, and uh, the parents like, "Okay, well, honey, we take this seriously. We're going to do our homework." And everything the parents read was like, "Look, if your kid says she's trans." Trans, she's trans, that's and it. they lived right. up in the Pacific Northwest, and that's where everything was heading. And uh, and then they talked to her and said, "Look, we're going to keep digging into this because we really care about what you feel, but no more social media, okay? We're going to go camping this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to start doing family dinners again. We're spending more time together." And they were trying to buy themselves some time. And it, within the course of a year, the girl had changed schools, and she found a new school where she had a new clique of friends that were like her. 
that didn't fit into the cultural norm of stereotypes of what girls are supposed to be, but were at home in their own bodies as women. And her gender dysphoria dissipated on its own. Wow. And, and so thanks be to God, I mean, the mother is a pharmacologist, the dad was well-educated, and they knew this is not the answer for my daughter. I mean, adolescence is such a time of turbulence and self-discovery oh, yeah. to pin it down and start throwing these kids on these, irre you know, these irreversible hormones is not the answer. It's child abuse. It, it is child abuse. Yeah, and thanks for saying it that directly. Yeah. Uh, how do you tell the difference, though, between the, the massive number of kids who is just caught up in this cultural moment? Yeah. And, and, and maybe there's, there's some cultural contagion. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you know? There was a phase when we were, we were Gen Xers, right? Yeah. There was a phase where like, everybody was bulimic and anorexic. Not yeah. everybody, but yeah. it, was, it, like, it was catchy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been instances of teenagers where suicide is contagious. Mm -hmm. This is clearly a contagion yeah. when mm -hmm. you think about the percentage of teenage girls who suddenly are, are, are transitioning and, yeah. and declaring themselves an, another gender. I, I, one of the tragedies here is as we're dealing with, with that, that cultural contagion is there still is that 0.01% yeah. who is just in agony. Yeah. You know, how do you tell the difference between those two? Yeah. And I, and I think the pastoral response to each group should be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But we, we, we tend to respond to all of them as if it's that 0.01%. So how do you tell the difference and, and how should the responses differ? Like as yeah. your, your parent and your kid says this. Yeah. You know, how, yeah. I don't know if, it's a t if that's a kind of a, yeah, no, a loaded I mean, question. No, but, but I think the world will tell you, look, you either accept these individuals or you're abandoning them. Yeah. What are you going to do? And for most people, it's like, well, I don't want to abandon them and be some transphobic jerk. So, yeah, if you want to be you, go do that thing. Yeah. But what's missing from the language is accompaniment. So the mm. answer is walking with these individuals it's a big, and big love. Francis word, right? Yeah, it's, it's... Li but listening to these people, mm. entering into their stories, and, and really caring about them. And so, for the parents, if your kid comes out, hey, mom, dad, I'm trans, I think the worst thing you do is freak out. And they just try to immediately intellectually convince them that they're wrong. Does you know they're going to want to in their own rebellion to discover their identity, dig their heels in? I think you're going to say, okay, well, look, I want to hear what you're hearing. I want to hear what you're listening, what you're watching. To share some videos or some YouTube influencers that you've been paying attention to. Right. Tell me about this. I want to listen to that, and then I want to share some things with you. Let's enter into a dialogue and talk about this. Mm -hmm. Because if they see that you're willing to listen to them and their sources they might actually listen to yours as well. Yeah. And then you could share with them some detransitioners while you're listening to their you know, Instagram person who talks about how you know, they need to have this transition. Mm. There needs to be a conversation. They need to see that you're willing to listen if they're gonna hear you. Mm. And so we can't just take the iron fist of like, nope, you're a boy and that's the way it's always gonna be. That's true, that, that is true, like yeah. you, you can't change that. Right. But we've gotta to get to the root, where is this coming from? You know, and, and you've gotta to listen to them and hope ask the right questions and maybe tease out of them these answers that they haven't even thought about yet. Yeah, do they usually know where it's coming from? No. I mean, they, they just, it, they, not on, off the top of their head. If, if they dig deeper, can they point to an event often? I mean, is there cause, oh. causality for this? And, and, I, and I wish we could point to a body of research, but all the research is, all the money for research is going to people who have an agenda. No, there's plenty of research showing, yeah. you know, where this stuff is coming from. Uh, for example... Hard to find uh, on Google, though, but nowadays. Well, like, for, for example, there's a great book called When Harry Became Sally by Ryan Anderson, just packed with solid research. Amazon took it off. You can't even buy it no, on Amazon anymore. No, that guy's been anymore. completely... But he, I mean, he uh, is rock solid, yeah. intellectually incredibly sharp, very compassionately written book, solid okay. as can be, but you can find it. Get a copy of When Harry Became Sally, read about that stuff. And so in terms of where it's coming from, I mean, a friend of mine experienced gender dysphoria, and, and he really looked back when he was a kid, you know, his, like, his grandmother would like dress him up and stuff. Um, mm. and, uh, and, and say, you know, like, and it would just dote on him with so much affection and love. And, mm. and he realized like, wow, I really feel loved when I'm identifying with this personage. And, and, and in his case, he went through the whole surgery and everything and lived oh, as oh, a wow. woman for many, many years. Wow. And then now detransitioned and is starting, you know, a ministry helping people with that. And, and you know, I've got another friend who went through it and, and he experienced sexual abuse when he was a young boy. And, and really just didn't feel masculine because it was from another man. Isn't that tragic? And he started to question his own sexual identity and transgender inclinations. And so th now I don't want to say, if you experience gender dysphoria, you must have been sexually abused. No, you must have been dressed no. up by your grandma in a, in a nice dress. But, the, but to it, not be allowed to explore those things. Yeah, everybody's story needs to be heard. Yeah, That's we're, we're not even allowed to. If a counselor asks those questions, they could lose their license. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and, that, and that's now branded as true care for the person. Yeah. You're not allowed to ask them mm -hmm. that maybe they're everything from asexual to non-binary to yeah. whatever, because maybe something happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, not every time.
but yeah. I'm sure a lot of the times, yeah. if we could actually listen to people. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Because uh, I mean, all of us are influenced by our environment. Everybody, yeah. nobody's exempt from this. Yeah. Just because I experience same-sex attractions or transgender inclinations, it's not like I'm exempt from the influence of human experience. Great question came in. How do we battle the possibility of getting canceled when talking about, about this? I'm actually kind of amazed that you've not been canceled yet. Though, yeah. though, there's plenty of Catholic high schools that have canceled you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got canceled in a whole country. <laughs> you know, going to speak in Ireland about a year ago uh, because of this. I mean, wow. you got to be willing because to be canceled. Because clearly you are filled with hatred and bigotry. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just, uh, I mean, they're, they're threatening me over social media that if I do arrive, they will boil me in a cauldron. Which is fine. I get to heaven a lot faster that way. But <laughs> okay. um, you know, that's healthy. But, so a lot of the events were canceled. Other ones got booked, and uh, you know, as a result of it, and lots of good media attention. But but I think we have to be willing to be canceled to tell the truth. Mm. That's the point. I mean, yet yeah, yeah. we need to be compassionate and nuanced and well researched on this. We've got to be those things. You can't just go off the rails and say whatever you feel like saying. Research it. Say it with love. Mm. But be willing to be canceled because if you're not willing to be canceled, you don't love these individuals to begin with. If you love your platform more than you love those people, yeah. then you shouldn't be having a platform in the first place right. willing to lose. You know, there, there are people in, in Catholic blogosphere, Twitter land yeah. who, um, they're, they're, I mean, it's almost part of the brand of let's be brash about all these yeah. things. Yeah. And, uh, and they want to be canceled, but they know that that'll get them in following in some other platform. You know, yeah. I, I think a key of, of how you're doing this, that's a good example for people watching, you use the word love a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, that the motive of, of, of where Catholics are coming at with our with the counseling, with our anthropology, mm -hmm. it's not hate for these people. Yeah. yeah it's, it's what is in the best interest of these individuals. Yeah. That, where's, the, where's the data pointing us? Yeah. Forget the religion, the theology, the spirituality. Where's the data really pointing us on the long-term mental health outcomes of individuals who experience transgender inclinations? And then hopefully the data. even people who disagree with us would say, your heart's coming at it from the same place maybe their heart is. Yeah. Uh, and then we'd come at some actual actual solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, pronouns. Yeah. Mine is His Majesty. Mm -hmm. No. No. Um, <laughs> how do we navigate the whole pronoun thing? Because yeah. I, I um, we, we have a general inclination to kindness. Yeah. I mean, that, mm -hmm. and that's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to try to be kind to people. Yeah. Right. Uh, so if someone says my preferred pronoun is she. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't, I, don't, I don't want to be a jerk to somebody, and yet yeah. I, I have an obligation to reality mm -hmm. and, and to not surrender the ground of what, what I think makes a woman a woman because yeah. that's uniquely beautiful. Yeah. And language is actually really important. Yeah. If you're going to tell me how I have to speak, and, and often that, that threat of talking a certain way with pronouns comes, comes with, you know, if you use the wrong pronoun, uh, you're a murderer. I'm going mm -hmm. to kill myself. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is, okay, dude, you... Yeah, and that would be my fault. I mean, yeah. really, I mean, yeah. the early Christians were hated. They were they were being eaten by lions. They weren't killing themselves though. They, they yeah. were healthy human beings. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. There's something else wrong here. If yeah. if one word from someone who disagrees with you might lead to that. Yeah. But anyway, how do we navigate uh, the the demand of people to, to use a pronoun that that violates how we see reality or, yeah. or violates no reality, not yeah. how we see yeah. reality? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a challenge because not only the pronouns but the, their name. If you refer to them by their original name rather yeah. than the new name they've chosen, yeah. they refer to you as what you're doing is you're dead naming them. Mm. And that's one of the worst things you could do is like, wow, you're just, you're dead naming me. You're calling me a name that is dead to me. And I can understand where there would be a lack of charity in that. Like if, if you change your name to Susan and you didn't want everybody to know that you were biologically male and I keep saying, hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, Harry, how? Like, yeah, it's like, wait yeah. a minute, like, what are you doing? I could see a, a true lack of charity in that. Yeah. But in the same respect, if you love somebody, you can't lie to them. And so therein lies the challenge. It, yeah. That and one of the issues with the, the the pronoun thing is that when I talk to you, we, I'm, I'm using a pronoun there. You know, I'm using a second person pronoun. You, 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 you. That's the benefit when you have a personal relationship. You're not really using third person pronouns as often. I only use third person pronouns about you when you're not here. He. That's yeah. the only time I would yeah. use it. And so what I would try to do is have more of a personal relationship where you're using more you than one where you're talking about them third person. And in that instance, try to work around it if it's an issue. I would not cave into their name or their pronoun. Why? Because you're bearing false witness and yeah. you're entertaining a delusion. This person probably has enough person, people around them saying, hey, you be whoever you want. And yeah. I think eventually they'll resent you right now if you don't but they're gonna resent you a mm. whole lot mm. more later and for all eternity if you never spoke to them the truth. Like, wow, you knew, mm. you knew. 
and you still caved in to the PC culture mm. when, when you could have just spoken to me in love. And I, the way I would express it is, look, you know I love you, and you have to have that foundation first. You yeah. know I care about yeah. you, and I have certain beliefs, and I know you do too, and I think our world is big enough for all kinds of different beliefs, and I don't want to lose my friendship with you. And I hope that you will respect my beliefs on this. And if you don't, I totally respect that. But know that I will never reject you because of what you believe and how you live. I am here. If you feel that you don't want to be friends with me because of what my belief are, I accept that. But I hope that you can tolerate what I believe and accept that there's diversity, there's different opinions, and the world's a big place for different people. That way you're putting the ball in their court to reject you because of your beliefs mm. instead of saying, I reject you because of what you want mm. me to say. Mm. Y I give you the freedom to no longer want to be my friend if you don't want to be. But, mm. but I, hope, I hope we can work around this some way and respect each other. Instead of me trying to control your speech, it's like me saying, like, every time you talk, I want right. you to say all glory to God at the end of every sentence. Right, <laughs> right. It's like, well, I demand it. Yeah, I demand I, well, I'm atheist. Well, yeah, but if right. you love me, you'll do that. It's like... Yeah, and I, and I like, I, it's, it's different. This whole thing's real yeah, hard to navigate. Yeah. I, I like the approach of, you know, with some people at some mm -hmm. phases in their life, just avoid it entirely. Yeah. You know, because maybe they are in a place where they're a wide open wound. Mm -hmm. And if you transition, I'm like, hey, Jason, well, first off, you'd be the most unattractive woman. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unattractive no, enough no as a man. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you were, seriously, if you were, not to make light of this, if you were struggling, you were an open wound, um, yeah, just, just to, Tread just to cautiously. go around it and, and not say, tread cautiously, not say, hey, bro. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. We, we got to meet people where they're at, not, not, not be jerks, frankly, but I'm also, I can't surrender to, to, to yeah. a lie. Yeah, and, and maybe even apologize to them if they've ever felt hurt by anyone who claims to be Christian or Catholic. And on behalf of I just apologize. I'm sorry if you've ever felt bigoted against or, you know, and, you know, because maybe they've experienced some really serious wounds. And the last thing we want to do is pour salt in those wounds yeah. by failing to be sensitive. But, you know, yeah. it, it's a challenge because love, like I said, to be real, sometimes you got to be honest. You, if you love someone, you can't lie to them. You can't no, build no. trust on something that isn't true. I have a dear priest friend who, who recently baptized a, a, a transgendered person mm -hmm. um, and said that this person is was clearly struggling with mental illness, mm -hmm. and and yet mental illness he didn't see. And this is a solid priest. Yeah. And he said, but mental illness is not is not an impediment to receiving a sacrament. Uh, but this person has, has genuine questions, like, um, you know, a, a, am I a woman? And he said, you know, we can work on this over time. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure you're receiving the sacraments because mm -hmm. the Lord loves you. Yeah. Um, but I can't I, I can't help you deny reality. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what gender I was when I was baptized. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So there's oh. there's there's a difference between this whole issue, yeah. and it's good to get that out there, and and the, the category of sin. It's mm -hmm. this this issue is a, is a mental health thing. Yeah. To, and sometimes sin is involved, like yeah. with everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone who's who's wanting to follow the Lord? And is genuinely is hearing the stuff we're talking about, yeah. and is just struggling with with gender dysphoria right now. Yeah. In fact, once you look at the camera and talk to that person for a minute, like, what would you say? Yeah. And they and they they're hearing us, and they're still saying, no, no, no this is hate speech. Yeah. I, I think there's there's one key. There's only one key, and the key is trusting the heart of your father. That's it. That that God does not want for you a life of desolation, of misery, of loneliness, of repression. That that is not His plan for you. But sometimes we don't. We distrust the heart of the Father. And as a result, we, we, we grasp onto what we think we need and what we mm. want, and we withhold from ourselves the blessings that he has to give to us. And he won't force them upon us, but will you trust the Father with your body? Will you trust the Father that he made you good, that your body is meaningful? It reveals your person. It reveals your identity. It reveals even your mission. And I know that there's wounds there. There's wounds in all of us in all different ways that manifest, but know that the Father loves you and just take it one step at a time. That lead, that trusting God does not lead to a life of desolation. And the, the enemy will want you, that is the primary mm -hmm. lie you want, he's gonna feed you. Do not trust the Father. If you trust the Father, life is gonna get so much worse. Don't trust the church, don't trust the Father, trust your feelings. But sometimes our feelings can lead us in all kinds of directions. So abandon your will to the will of the Father and just watch what he's able to do in your life. Praise God, thank you, brother. Let's, yeah. uh, let's say a prayer. Yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for creating us good. We thank you for creating us in your image and likeness. We thank you for the gift of our bodies. Uh, we ask that, that, uh, that anyone who's struggling with gender dysphoria would come to, to know your great love right where they are and would also have the courage to respond to your call to live a life according to truth 
the reality and the life of reconciliation with the body that you gifted them with. Uh, we pray for parents trying to navigate this, and we pray for us in our work as we try not to get canceled so we can keep bringing your gospel <laughs> to the world. Uh, thank you for loving us. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, thanks for diving into this with us. Uh, let's keep praying for one another. And brother, thank you so much for your courageous work. Always a joy. Thanks for, I mean, you go there. Yeah. You're not afraid, and it's the love of God that, that drives you there. I'm honored to know you, man. So oh, thanks, thanks for the example. God bless.